might have heard of this kid. Uh, what's his name? Tall Fort Gang. Is that really his name? That's his name, Tall Fort Gang. I thought he was a Jewish guy. He's a Jewish guy. That's not that. Ain't, that ain't no Jewish name. But Tall go ahead. Fort Gang. I don't know. Yeah. This this Princeton. This yeah. You're gonna laugh right now because he goes to Princeton. Right. Because what is what is iron irony? My name is Princeton. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I mean, really. Go ahead. So he wrote this piece. This Princeton student, Tall Fort Gang, wrote this piece for the. <laughs> For the Princeton Tory. I mean, really, this isn't any better. <laughs> it's a conservative college paper called, he wrote this piece for the Princeton Tory called, Checking My Privilege, Character as the Basis of Privilege. And this piece has been spreading online like wildfire. It's been posted by the popular uh, right wing college site, The College Fix, the conservative upworthy clone which is really big on facebook if you have conservative family members or friends uh the independent journal review they've all reposted this and then after it went viral time magazine and the new york times thought you know what we really need to repost this too for no reason other than clickbait pretty much so this kid he's saying basically he doesn't have white privilege and to the extent that he does, he shouldn't have to apologize for it. He's sick and tired of his college classmates telling him to check his privilege. Blah, 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 blah. So, you know what? Basically. Let's uh, dissect this just a little bit. Uh, he writes that there is a phrase that floats around college campuses. Princeton being no exception that threatens to strike down opinions without regard for their merits, but rather solely on the basis of the person that voiced them. Check your privilege, the saying goes, and I have been <laughs> reprimanded by it several times this year. This sounds a lot like the whine of freedom of speech, which is, of course, not really what's going on here because this kid is more than welcome to spout whatever he wants to say just as his college classmates are welcome to say, dude, check your privilege in response to it. Again, though, let's continue. The phrase handed down by my moral superiors descends recklessly like an Obama-sanctioned drone and... Wow. <laughs> and aims laser-like at my pinkish peach complexion, my maleness, and the nerve I displayed in offering an opinion. Now let's just get to that, because boy, does that say white privilege. You have a kid from Princeton who's white and Jewish saying that his opinion and the fact that someone says, check your privilege to his opinion, is like a drone strike. My right to say something without being told to check my privilege is the equivalent of a Yemeni's family's a Yemeni family being stricken down and incinerated, killed, murdered by a drone. That, my friends, is white privilege. Yes. But let's continue because I don't really want to want to want to stay too long on what he says. While it's it's worth pointing out, but there there's something I'm I'm trying to get to here. Check your privilege, he writes, uh, in, com in command that teeters between an imposition to actually explore how I got where I am and a reminder that I ought to feel personally apologetic because white males seem to pull most of the strings in the world. This, this really is, it's, 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 it, it, it is in a nutshell what conservatives and white males feel like. They feel like they are victimized. They need to be victimized. They want to be the underdog because they want to believe that whatever they did in their life and wherever they are now, that's, that's the only correlation. Whatever they did to, to, to work hard in life, the jobs they had, the schooling they did, that is the only indicator of where they are in their life in terms of success in and being employed at a, in having a good job in having a family upbringing a big house because because a it's wrong period because obviously there's more to that than just that but also it's wrong because they only view this privilege in terms of class and economy listen white privilege is simply being able to walk down the street 
and not being not windows not being uh, people not peeking through windows because why are these people walking down the street in my neighborhood? White privilege being able to walk down the street and someone not locking the door their car door as you pass them by. White privilege is a cop not stopping you and frisking you because you're a young black male in in even your home your own neighborhood. That's white privilege. White privilege doesn't even have to do with something that you do. It is it is like it's it's just it's omnipresent. It's a reality of your existence. And 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 you don't and and white people, let me get this out here right now. No one wants you to apologize for your white privilege. They're not looking for an apology. White privilege is not your fault. What is your fault is your refusal to acknowledge that this privilege exists and that you benefit from it. And to work to correct it. Let's continue here with this, this piece. I do condemn them, he says. For diminishing everything I've personally accomplished, all the hard work I've done in my life, and for ascribing all the fruit I reap, not to the seeds I sow, but to some invisible patron saint of white maleness who places it out of out for me before I even arrive. Where? Yeah, really? Where? Let's 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 let's. let's, let's let, I, I'm interested now. I want to hear what tall fort gang. Has done in his life. I want to hear the hard work and the trials and tribulations he, Tall Fort Gang, personally went through. So, in conclusion, Susie Kim, date me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Tall Fort Gang. You have no right no, to say let's, no. Let's really get to. Sorry. Let's really get to this. Okay. Let's hear what he says is his hard work. Because maybe he did something crazy to get into Princeton. Maybe he really, you know. Let's let's listen. I actually went and checked through the origins of my privileged existence to empathize with those whose underdog stories I can't possibly comprehend. Let's hear what tall let's hear tall Fort Gang underdog what he's done. Perhaps it's the privilege of my grandfather and his brother who had fleed from their home as teenagers when the Nazis invaded Poland. I'm skipping around here now. Or maybe it's the privilege of my grandmother who had spent weeks upon weeks on a death march through Polish forests in sub-zero temperatures. Perhaps my privilege is, the two is that these two resilient individuals came to America with no money and no English, obtained citizenship, learned the language, and met each other. Perhaps it is my privilege that my own father worked hard enough in City College to earn a spot at a top graduate school and get a good job. That's the problem with calling someone out for their privilege, which you assume has defined their narrative. You don't know what their struggles have been, what they may have gone through to be where they are. What? Dude, you've laid out nothing that you, Tall Fort Gang, have done. What your grandparents did. To, to escape the Holocaust and come to America and become successful and be able to raise your father so he could go to a good school and go to graduate school and get a good job. And then so for, for him to be able to raise you good too so he could get you into Princeton. All that that your grandparents went, to, went through is truly remarkable. And, you know, it is something to definitely be proud of. Your grandparents escaped the Holocaust and... And we're able to make something of the rest of their life so that their children and their children's children had a good life. But the very fact that your grandparents, you later on, let's get to what he said later on about them really quick before I get to this. It is my distinct privilege that my grandparents came to America. First, that there was a place at all that, that would take them from the ruins of Europe. And second, this such place was one they could legally enter, learn the language, and acclimate to a society that ultimately allowed them to flourish. It was their privilege to come to a country that grants equal protection under the law to its citizens, that cares not about religion or race, but the content of your character. What's truly sad about this is that Tall Fort Gang is laying out the, priv the white privilege that his own Holocaust survivor grandparents have without even realizing it's white privilege. His grandparents, Holocaust survivors, were able to come to this country legally because of their whiteness. This country accepted them when they weren't accepting others because of their whiteness. They were able to start their business, get an education, make money, do what, be acclimated into society during that time. 
because of their whiteness. Because while they were doing that, other people's Japanese grandparents were being forced into internment camps. African American grandparents were being told that they were not they were still not equal. They weren't allowed to go to the same schools. They weren't allowed to go to the same places, the same establishments. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, they couldn't drink out of the same fountains. They were banned from just receiving the same education. In many areas, the KKK was still lynching African Americans. This is white privilege, Tall. My God, it's unbelievable. He goes on. Assuming they've, be they've benefited from power systems or other conspiratorial imaginary institution denies them credit for all they've done. Things of which you may not even conceive. You don't know whose father died defending your freedom. That right there, he assumes that during World War II, someone's father died for your freedoms. Yes, people died in World War II for just and good causes, but listen. Those freedoms were not being given to many different groups who were not white. Now, as, as I dismantle and, and, and take apart what, what Tall Fort Gang wrote, I mean, he goes on. He goes on to basically say, if you, if, you, if you call him out for his whiteness, it is you who are the real racist, which is, it's, the, it's, it's lovely to hear that. It's, it's always funny. But, but the sad thing is that all these people who are who are writing these pieces trying to, to, to show Tall the way. And all these TV shows talking about it. And, you know, Time Magazine and the New York Times reposting this because, you know, people are saying he has a good point, white people. So maybe we should, you know, repost this so people could talk about it. It does a disservice because it legitimizes this feeling. Because this feeling is, is very much... It's very much cemented in white supremacy. Whether the person who's reading this and goes, maybe Tall's the point is racist or not, you can argue. But I'm going to make the argument here that any of these people could have easily taken apart what Tall said by doing a simple online search of Tall Fort Gang's views. And then all they had to lay out was his own words that he previously written before writing this piece. If you went to Tall Fort Gang's Twitter account, Pastrami on Rye, Ooh. he had some very interesting things to say. Now, it's definitely seated in someone who has white privilege, but I'm going to argue that it's also racist as hell. Tall Fort Gang writes, on July 19th, 2013, President Obama, have a conversation with black cultural icons, the people whose message is heard, and have them change their message. <laughs> White privilege. Little junior Bill O'Reilly there. Jesus. Obama isn't wrong per se, Tall Ford Gang writes on July 19, 2013. He's just misapprehending the problem. Stop glorifying gangster culture. <laughs> And giving people reason to suspect you. That's dog whistle politics right there. He's using that word because he doesn't want to outright say black people. That's dog whistle moron. Or Negro. This kid is mind blowingly stupid. Or the stupid. N word. This kid is mind blowingly stupid. Tall Fort Gang writes on July 13th, 2013. Tweeting about how justice hasn't been served and how we did not convict Zimmerman makes me want to punch you in your fat idiot faces. Ah. White privilege. Stupidity. Shittiness. Horrible human beings. On June 18, 2013, Tall Fort Gang, who, reading through his stuff, really wanted to be one of those Twitter comedians, you know, weird Twitter, uh, in reply to a joke that every time you walk by a big bank, kick in a fucking window after all your tax dollars paid for it, he replies, how about, he, this is what he writes, punch a person on food stamps, question mark, yeah, really hitting high there. No wonder he wasn't a successful uh, Twitter comedian. Uh, Tall Fort Gang, though, this is really maybe the worst one, at least about African Americans. And really, this is really white privilege and racism. On August 1st, 1st 2013, Tall Fort Gang writes, 
I thought that whole thing about a word being okay for a black person to say, but not for a white person was a joke. Tell me more about racism. Why can't I say the N word? Oh my God, this kid is stupid. Jesus. Really? This is, I mean, the New York Times and Time Magazine reposted this kid's piece about white privilege. And, Har- and Princeton accepted him, which is the true profound embarrassment for that place. Now, if his views on African Americans isn't enough for you, Tal Fort Gang has some interesting views on Palestinians. I'm sure. In his. Twitter bio, he wrote, as where he's from, settling the West Bank. (laughs) And some of his tweets. Greatest show on turf, he wrote on January 16th, 2013. My turf, not your turf, and the Muslim occupation of Israel. Vote Ozma. On November 21st, 2012, he wrote, Hitler had guts to lie showing his face in taking uh, Sudetenland. Sudetenland land. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Palestinians who got a finger and a, want a hand like cowards are much worse. Wow. On, again, 21st of November 2012. By the way, liberators of Palestine, confident in your god of war, you are living at Israel's mercy. Shut up before they've had enough. That's all you had to do, really, if you yep. wanted to say this piece on white privilege is bullshit. And in, in answer, to answer, Tall Fort Gang's refusal to not apologize for his white privilege... You only have to bring up the fact that after all these tweets were pointed out throughout the internet on Twitter, Tall Fort Gang deleted his Twitter account. Ah. 